Hello, it's Jeanette with Geomazing Paper Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm back with another video tutorial. and today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I put together this cute little double pocket uh, masculine looking uh, notebook gift. Uh, it's kind of like a, a little gift pad uh, notebook. And inside it has a little notebook from the Dollar Tree. Uh, the Dollar Tree has these cute little notebooks. I'm sure if you've been to a Dollar Tree, you get them in this a packet like this and they're a bunch of different colors and you get five of them for a dollar. So I have one notebook kit in here and I also have a calendar. It's a nice large print calendar. Now I designed this calendar in my Corral Draw. Um, if you have that program, it's not hard to do. Um, but the reason I designed it is be, uh, this way is because I want the numbers to be nice and big. Uh, especially when uh, you plan on giving your uh, you know your calendars to somebody who might be older and eyesight not so good this is why I designed this calendar the way I did uh, with the bigger numbers on here and yes I am making it available in my Etsy store as a PDF very inexpensive but I'm also making it available free for any of my customers who come shopping with me from now till the end of November and I will have a hostess code uh, up on the screen okay so anyway I'm going to show you how I made this notebook and I'll like I say you know it's it's a really nice gift but I'm also making them for a craft fair I just want to show you I'm using up some of my designer series paper that has been retired and see I'm making them in all of these retired colors isn't that cool <laughs> so Yep, craft fair, and I'm probably going to be charging about maybe $4 or so for them. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so anyway, if you want to learn how I made this uh, little calendar uh, notebook, just keep on watching. So to begin, I'm going to start out with a piece of cardstock, and this is the Early Espresso. Uh, basically, what I just did is just took an 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock, and I cut it down to eight and one quarter. So it's eight and a half by eight and one quarter. And I'm gonna, instead of bringing out my scoreboard, I thought I'd bring out the new uh, Stampin', a Stampin' Up! paper trimmer. Isn't this cool? I think that the more that I use this, the more I like it. So we're gonna go ahead and score this on the, um, on the shorter side, which would be the eight and a quarter side, uh, we're going to score it at two and three quarters of an inch. That's right. Yes, two and three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to be using my uh, score scoring blade. I really like the way this scores. And then I'm going to turn this, and I'm going to score on the longer side, the eight and a half side and I'm going to score this at four and one eighth okay um yeah four and one eighth but I'm only going to score down to that one score line there okay this score line here if I go beyond it it's okay and then I'm going to move it over and score it at four and three eighths just down to that one score line there okay <clears throat> so what I'm going to do with the cutting blade down here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm leaving it here at the four and uh, uh, the four and one eighth. Yes, I'm leaving it there and I'm going to just cut up to that score line that's there. Okay, and I'm going to move this back over to the four. I, I, I had that at the four and three eighths. I'm sorry. So I'm going to move it back to the four and one eighth, and then I'm going to score. I'm going to cut up to that score line. So basically, what I've done is I've just cut the sliver up. Now it's really simple to do that too with this with this trimmer because on I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but right here on this blade you have a, a center guide. So I just matched, matched that center guide to where I wanted to stop cutting, and it did a perfect job. It's one of the reasons I really, really love this um, this new trimmer. Now what else I'm going to do is I, I, I need to trim just a little bit more off the sides of this. 
um, I cut just so that I could have a little bit of a guide. So I'm going to move it over just slightly and I'm going to do a little bit more cutting into that, um, that little strip. And I'm going to move it over just a little bit and I'm going to move and, and cut just up to that line. And so now I've got like these two little slivers here. And that's basically really what I wanted to cut off. But those that but that center center sliver of the the cutting lines kind of gave me a guide. So you don't have to do it that way. You can just cut with your scissors if you want to and you know score all the way down and cut with your scissors. But I really like the way this actually cut everything. Um and now I'm folding these two things down because that's what's going to make our two pockets here. And I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm just going to snip that off right there. So now we've got our two pockets in here. We have a little bit of a gap, but that's where our, our pen is going to go inside, inside or outside the gap. So let me put this away. Our new trimmer which um, if, if the date is available by the time I make this video I will post it on the, the screen here but if not I'm sure it's going to be available for everyone soon all right the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tear and tape now this tear and tape is a little too thick for what I want to do here let me grab my bone folder so that I can um, fold these down a little bit better here I need to put tear and tape a little strip of tear and tape just on here, 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 and there. Okay, but it's too thick. So I could either go try to find some thinner, uh, you know, double-sided adhesive, or what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut approximately how much I need, and I'm just going to just snip down the middle. And there's other ways that you can do this. Um, I just want to make sure that it's a very thin line of tape and I'm just taking my my uh, paper snips and I'm cutting straight down the middle just to make it thinner that's if you don't have the skinnier tape I know other companies sell uh, a 1 8 inch but Stampin' Up! doesn't have the 1 8 inch and if you don't have it this is the way I do it I just cut two skinny strips and now I'm gonna put one strip here on this side let me temporarily put that out of sight okay and I'll still be able to cut it with oops let me make sure that it's right on the edge I'll still be able to cut it with my block okay and then I'm going to put the other one here on this side so it really really does help if you have skinnier tape or you could actually use liquid glue a very thin line of liquid glue here that would help too okay and I'm gonna do the other side and I will be right back now once you have these little strips of tape on I'm gonna take you can take your take your pick tool or any pick tool and just go ahead and remove the backer paper I don't have my little trash can in here on my desk here. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then I am going to very carefully make sure that the edges line up. Okay, right there, and I'm gonna fold that over. Make sure my edges line up perfectly, and they do. Okay, and so now I have my two pockets done, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, and test to see if this tablet works okay in here. And it does. There, my tablet's going to fit just perfectly in there. But I'm going to take it out for right now because I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to put some snail adhesive, just a strip all the way down so that I could attach my ribbon. Or my uh, yeah my ribbon it is ribbon oh well here it is I, I've already cut it I'll put it on the screen it is a combo pack you get some Baker's twine with this so I'm just gonna set this right here and this looks like it's in the crumb cake color if not I will let you know okay now I can put my 
uh, designer series paper on top and I've got two pieces of designer series paper and they both measure four inches by five and three eighths of an inch and I don't want very much of a border around here and that's why I measured it to be that that big and I'm you know and I <clears throat> you can cut the the uh, the stripes or the um, the planks to be this way too if you want to cut your paper that way but I like them going up and down like paneling so I'm just going to go ahead and, and attach this I need to bring out my silicone craft sheet that's what I need to do <clears throat> all right we are going to just have a very small border all the way around very small okay it's not perfect but it's okay and on the other side I decided to go ahead and go with a similar color um, but not the planks so I've got this little polka dot from the same uh, gathered uh, come gather come to come to gather that's what the name of this uh, designer series paper is come to gather instead of come together it's come to gather All right, I'm just putting enough snail just to give myself a small border all the way around there we go okay now it's coming together it's coming together no it's coming together <laughs> all right now I am going to go ahead and place my designer series paper on the inside and I have two pieces that measure they're just a little bit different they measure um, instead of four inches I've cut this down to three and seven eighths by two and a half inches and I'm gonna have the little polka dots on the inside like that so let me just go ahead and put some more snail adhesive on here and try to get an even border all on all sides if you can this be neat there we go okay go ahead and put our tablet in there and we'll put our our calendar this this nice big print calendar and like I said before you um, you can earn this calendar for free the PDF and so that you can print it out um, and uh, if you want the white line around it on the PDF it's going to have a little tiny hairline so that you can cut around the hairline to get a perfect white line. Um, so that might be helpful to anybody who wants that fine line. But like I said, there's not a die that comes with it. You will have to cut it out with your paper trimmer. Okay, so now I can go ahead and tie this because that's all that's going on the inside. And I'll just go ahead and make a bow. And going to show you how I did the pen and that's kind of fun um, I have a little strip of this uh, designer series paper and this measures uh, 7 eighths of an inch I believe let me make sure that that's what that measures because I know that it's not three quarters of an inch it might be 7 eighths getting my ruler out here hmm well it's yeah it is seven eighths of an inch okay and it measures four inches and so what I do is I just take my bone folder and I try to break up the fat for the fibers of the paper as much as I can okay and I'm going the other way too I'm just kind of doing doing it firm but gentle try not to rip your paper because then you'd have to start all over again and now I'm just going to kind of curl it this way just to kind of get it started I'm using my bone folder to just help me curl like that okay and now this is the pen I'm going to use I got this from the Dollar Tree in fact these are excellent gel pens I just want want you to see how nice they write see I've been scribbling <laughs> I've been scribbling all day with with pens but they're very very nice and I've never had a problem with one single one yeah so I'm going to take it apart I'm going to unscrew the tip and bring out the pen. You see this is the tip, this is the pen. 
And I'm also going to take off this little um, black plug right there because I'm going to be feeding the paper through like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to curl the paper around the pen. I'm sure you've seen this done before, but this is just the way I do it. And I like to kind of rock and roll just to make sure this paper is going to stay curled up while it's in there and not open up. So I don't want any gaps. I don't want to see I don't want them to see the pen. I just want them to see the paper in there. Okay. So, I think I've got it pretty good. It's staying still. That's a good thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and feed it through here. I'm going to feed the pen back through here. I'm going to put the cap or the tip back on the pen and screw it in there. Okay. And I'm going to put the cap back on the pen. And now I've got, or, or the, the plug back on the pen, and now I've got the cap here. And now I can put this right on the side. And there you have it. There's your, your matching pen with your holder. And so I'm going to decorate it, and I'll be right back. So I decided to just do something really simple for this decoration. And I'm using the Sailing Home stamp set, the Kling stamp set. I just used this uh, sentiment, let hope be your anchor through the storms of life. And I also used the uh, coordinating die. Uh, and this has a little frame right here that framed that sentiment really well. But it has a lot of other uh, shapes and everything to go with that stamp set. <clears throat> now to make that little frame around that sentiment, I just used my everyday label and used it with some early espresso. So it very, very simple. I used some of the trinkets. These are these uh, sailing, sail away trinkets. They have anchors and wheels in here. So cute. So I put an anchor and a wheel on this and I put it on some of the uh, baker's twine. I believe this is uh, crumb cake or Sahara sand and night of navy. Just like that. It's very, very simple. Okay? And this is going to make a really nice gift for the men in your life. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope I taught you something. If you need any of the tools and supplies that I use in this video, please go to my website at www.geoamazingpapercrafts.stampinup.net. Also, everything that I use will be listed in the description of the video. So once again, I am Jeanette with Geo Amazing Paper Crafts, and you make it a great day. Bye-bye.